Martinez shot dead in Venezuela, one critically injured. Sheet anchor murder suspect found hanging from tree. Fire destroy George Young businesses. President David Granger will not give explanations for his rejection of the first two GCAM lists. Dr. Rupert Rubnarine will remain a Minister of Public Service. Those were the top headlines for the week ending July 21. Welcome to MTV News Updates Week in Review. I'm Trish Ramla. Good afternoon. Three gold miners have been shot dead and another injured following an invasion into their camp in the Cuyuni Mining District by a band of marauders. The dead have been identified as 55-year-old Vernon Eudoxi, 23-year-old Cologne Solomon, and 19-year-old Samuels Moses. The three men are from Port Kaituman Northwest District. One of the injured has been identified as 22-year-old Joel Paton. Paton is in a serious but stable condition receiving medical care. He sustained multiple gunshot wounds about his body. The police say the bodies bore several gunshot wounds and are at the Port Kaitum Hospital mortuary awaiting post-mortem examinations. According to the police, the dead bodies and injured persons were brought from a mining camp in Venezuela and transported to Port Kaitum this morning about 6 hours 25. The police say from initial information, the injured and now deceased were part of a team employed by a Brazilian miner. The operation was conducted at Imitaca Mining Bagdam, Venezuela, approximately three miles from the Guyana border. The police added that the men were attacked on Wednesday by four armed men with foreign accent who began to shoot indiscriminately. That resulted in the death of the three men and the injuries to the others. The police say the other co-workers ran into the bushes. According to the deceased sister Claire Richards, the family heard rumors of the incident. She said the alleged shooting took place in the Lena Bagdam approximately five hours from the five-star Bagdam. They brought out the bodies by ATV. We were hoping that at least the government could have interceded and bring out their bodies by helicopter. But it took them 24 hours to get out to Port Kaituma via ATV and the trailers. And so awesome, I should say. But yes, it's confirmed that my brother, along with two others, had perished. Richards explained that her brother worked in the mines since he left school. The woman added that on several occasions, her brother had reported that a number of Venezuelans have been entering the area and robbing Guyanese of their gold and other valuables. I know the media is aware that these robbers have been coming over to Guyana for the past six to seven days, robbing each camp that they come into contact with. I mean, it wouldn't have taken the army an hour to fly in a troop of, ar of armies to patrol the borderline and to keep people safe. I mean, it's Guyana shore. Richards believes that the security forces have to increase their presence in the mining area. The Venezuelans can't just come over, take what they want, do what they want and go back and think it's okay. Because had the army been there, from the past five days, three days, four days, I think this, 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 um, this situation will have occurred. One of the injured miners has been air dashed to the city for medical attention. The other will be transported to the city on Friday morning. The police have launched an investigation into the matter. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The body of the sheet anchor man, suspected of brutally chopping his wife to death three weeks ago, was hanging from a tree on Sunday, July 17. Find out more in this report. Dead is 47-year-old Goldburn December of Sheetanka Burbies. According to Divisional Commander Ian Amsinam, the dead man was identified by one of his relatives. December's lifeless body was found hanging from a tree on the bank of the Kanji River. According to Amsterdam, the corpse was transported to the mortuary and is awaiting a post-mortem examination. Son of the deceased, Chris December, says he knew what his father was going through with his mother. However, despite their ailing relationship, he had loved both of his parents. When you used to call you in the work and everything, you used to call you human robot. It was the work, the type of work that you can do it. Everything. Anyway, he probably was in this world for the so on. And he used to do my see me more than he used to do it to my father and everything. And I said, I know when, so I've learned she's my mother. 
On June 21, 2017, the dead man and his now deceased wife, Minty Karmchan, had an argument where December accused her of being unfaithful. The police say as a result of the argument, the suspect became annoyed, picked up a wooden stool, and dealt the woman several lashes on her head. The woman escaped from that attack by jumping through a window. However, the suspect did not leave the woman alone. December then armed himself with a chopper and allegedly dealt her several chops to her feet, hands and head. This brutal attack resulted in the woman collapsing on the ground. Reports are that the ordeal took place in front of one of the woman's children. The critically wounded woman was rushed to the New Amsterdam Hospital where she succumbed while receiving medical care. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Several businesses in Charlotte Street have been destroyed by fire after the wooden building that housed them went up in flames. Firefighters were able to contain the place to one location. Find out more in this report. Fire Chief Marlon Gentle says Central Fire Station received a call that the building was engulfed in flames around 5 hours 20 on July 18. The fire chief explained that when the equipment arrived, the firefighters reported heavy fire in the upper and middle flat of the building. However, as you can see, the, the design of the building would have also been some amount of difficulty and challenges for them to actually get to the fire. They managed, however, to contain the fire as a standard procedure prevented from going east, west, north or south. They have succeeded in doing that. As a matter of fact, the building to the uh, west and the buildings to the north, which are under direct threat, were not really affected. We are still in mopping up mode. So far, we know that this entire structure, especially the rear, has been totaled. And, so, and the forward of it, meaning the southern side of it, has suffered severe internal damages. Proprietor of the building, Jocelyn Dow, relayed what took place. So I ran outside to where I, the first one was. No sign of anything. I came back inside because there was no fire I could see. Then I came down and then suddenly I saw smoke coming up from the floor. So I called over, ran downstairs to tell the neighbors because they're on the windward to, to look out. But nobody answered. Dow says she was only able to rescue her two dogs as all she wanted to do was to get out of the burning building. And I called on my regular line, 912, and by the time I came downstairs, a tender was outside. So they did an incredible job. I told them it was at the bottom, but by then the top had started to burn. The Guyana Fire Service has launched an investigation into the unknown origin of the fire. The fire department will determine the cause of the fire when that investigation is completed. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. Four prison escapees continue to elude joint services. However, the luck of another escapee ran out Monday, July 17, when he was recaptured in Sofia. On Friday, one of the escaped prisoners was also caught on the west bank of Demerara. Find out more in this report. Assistant Commissioner Operations Clifton Hicken confirmed that Cornelius Thomas was caught hiding in Seafield Sophia. His arrest was made without any difficulty. Thomas is currently being questioned at the Criminal Investigations Department headquarters. He is the second escapee caught within four days. Divisional Commander Leslie James says 24-year-old Desmond James was caught on Friday evening. Commander James says the escapee was recaptured by ranks within the division at Canal No. 1 West Bank, Demerara. The divisional commander says approximately 23 hours on Friday night, ranks proceeded to an abandoned house on an access dam where the suspected escapee was hiding. After the escapee was arrested, he told investigators that he was heading to Essequibo. A knife and a few pieces of clothing were also found on his possession. Meantime, Mark Royden Williams, Yuri Farswick, Starfrey Alexander and Kerbina Stevens remains at large. An operation was conducted in the Durban backlands on Sunday 
following intelligence that the men were spotted in the area. The Ghana Defense Force and the Ghana Police Force conducted the joint operation. The joint services combed the backlands, which included aerial surveillance in search of the escapees. However, the search for the men came up empty-handed. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. Meanwhile, another was cornered by the police in the Barbies area. However, he managed to elude the lawmen. Following the July 9 prison fire and jail break, the opposition party was finally officially briefed by the government on the situation. However, opposition parliamentarian Juan Edgel, who attended the said meeting, claims it was mere politics as the government did not initiate any partnership with the opposition to help secure the country. No information was given on how the opposition can partner with the administration to ensure security of the state and its people. This is according to opposition member of parliament, Juan Edgel. He believes the engagement with the government was an exercise in futility that only serves the government's interests for the purpose of politicking. The meeting follows the July 9 prison unrest at the Camp Street prison where one prison officer lost his life while eight prisoners escaped. I will not allow you to think that you're doing me a favor. I left home on a Saturday morning to come to Parliament buildings to meet with the government and the technical people for a serious brief as it relates to this very national issue. And you can't treat us like this. They shut the meeting down. So nothing came out of it. It was useless. Edgel says when probed for more information, the party was shut down as Minister Ramjatan had suggested their answers will come to light in an imminent commission of inquiry. It was used by Mr. Ramjatan as an excuse for not allowing the Commission of Police and the Director of Prisons to answer direct questions. According to him, the party has vowed not to provide any political coverage for the criminals who would have escaped. However, the party is standing in full support of the security forces for the recapture of the escapees together with maintaining of law and order. What legisl immediate legislative uh, measures are required for us to be able to even come to the parliament hurriedly to make legislative changes to deal with the situation. None of that was discussed. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Minister of State Joseph Harmon has confirmed that Dr. Rupert Rupnarain will remain the Minister of Public Service following a meeting with him. He also revealed that the head of state pledged to support Dr. Rupnarain. Find out more in this report. President David Granger, accompanied by Minister of State Joseph Harmon, engaged Dr. Rupert Rupnarain in a fruitful deliberation on July 19. This follows the former Minister of Education tendering his resignation to the Head of State. The meeting bore positive results as the Member of Parliament pledged to continue his portfolio as a Minister of Public Service, according to Minister of State Joseph Harmon. It was clear after that meeting that Dr. Rupnarain will continue to serve as a Minister in the government, as a member of parliament, and as a valued member of our cabinet. According to Harmon, Dr. Rupnarain cited health challenges among the reasons for his resignation. During the meeting, the president assured Rupnarain that available support will be provided to ensure he functions in the ministry effectively. Um, Dr. Rupnarain's contribution to this country and the, his ability and capacity to continue to contribute is one which the president um, uh, spoke about and was very happy that Dr. Rupnarain has actually pledged to continue serving in the interests of all of Guyana. Dr. Rupnarain was removed from the helm of the Education Ministry and will serve as a Minister of Public Service. He is also the co-founder of the Working People Alliance. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjatan is pleading with the relatives and friends to provide any information on the whereabouts of the four escapees. The men, along with those recaptured, escaped from lawful custody at the George Young Prison during the recent fire at the correctional facility. Details in this report. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjatan has given credit to the Joint Services in their intelligence-led operation in recapturing Cornelius Thomas, Thomas was arrested during an operation in Seafield Sophia on Monday afternoon. 
Minister Ramjitan says the manhunt continues for the four remaining escapees. Those at large are Mark Williams, Yuri Varswick, Starfrey Alexander and Kobina Stevens. Assistant Commissioner of Police Operations Clifton Hicken says they are working around the clock to recapture those wanted men. Part of our mission was to recapture prisoners. We are doing that as recent as today. Cornelius Thomas was recaptured, so we have four and we are working around the clock to ensure um, they are recaptured. Uh, part of our mission also was to ensure we sanitize, secure the prisoners, ensure the prisoners are safe. The minister alluded to that and we are doing that as we speak. And we will continue to work in collaboration with the Joint Services to ensure that normalcy prevails. Lieutenant Colonel Ramkaran Dudnot of the Ghana Defence Force says the force is in full support of the civil authority. Lieutenant Colonel Dudnot says the army has also provided logistical and ground support to the Ghana Police Force to conduct their operation in the recapturing of the escapees. Whatever logistical and personal support we can put in the field to assist in the recapture of the escaped prisoners and to restore order and the movement of the prisoners into the new holding area, we will support. And the key word is that we are in support. The public security minister is pleading with the escapees, families and friends to come forward if they have any information of their whereabouts. It is a civic duty in your part. It is to ensure the stability and security of our country that we capture as early as possible. These pieces of information that you have will be held in the highest of confidentiality. And please don't be afraid to come forward and help. It will go a far way. And I am also, if for any reason these escapees will get this information, please come, come out and help in the situation. I know that, you know, that, that, uh, this is not, it's going to be rough out there. Get out and give yourself up. You're not going to win against the state. Absolutely not. So in your interest, it's better that you do come out. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Despite the ruling of the Chief Justice Acton, President David Granger is determined to hold on to his perception of a fit and proper person to fill the position of a chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. Find out more in this report. Well, the Chief Justice um, gave an appointment based on her perception of the law and I will continue to act in accordance with my perception of the Constitution. That is to say, I will not appoint somebody who I do not consider fit and proper. President David Granger says he is only following what the Constitution prescribes him to do with regards to the selection and subsequent appointment of a chairman of the elections body. The head of state says he does not need to give reasons why he rejected the two lists which were sent by the opposition leader Bar Jagdio. He believes that the ruling by the acting Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire does not diminish what the Constitution prescribes. I do not believe that anything that the Honorable Chief Justice said has diminished my regard for the word and spirit of the, uh, of the Constitution. One more I, do believe, I do believe that, as I said here, the person must be independent, must be impartial. And I'm, I'm looking for that independence and impartiality. Acting Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire in her ruling noted that the Constitution gives no reference for judicial persons but for other categories of persons who are found to be fit and proper for the post. The Chief Justice handed down the ruling while noting that the GCOM chairman does not necessarily have to be a judicial officer or a person qualified as such. The person, she noted, however, must have judge-like qualities such as integrity, honesty, and impartiality. She stressed that the words fit and proper can apply to persons from a number of professions. The judge noted that Article 162 of the Constitution speaks to the need for dialogue and compromise. As such, she noted that President Granger, in rejecting the list provided by Jagdio, should give reason for the rejection of the names as it would give an indication of those to be accepted. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Guyana's primary health care service is expected to be massively boosted as a 17.5 million US dollar agreement has been inked between the governments of India and Guyana. 
An agreement was today signed between the government of India and Guyana, approving credit of 17.5 million US dollars for the primary health care system in Guyana. Minister of Health Vola Lawrence said with this financial support, in 2020, the ministry's vision is to prioritize a working and comprehensive primary care program. I wish to assure you, Ambassador, that this line of credit will be utilized by the ministry to help in the fulfillment of its mandate of enhancing the delivery of primary health care in Guyana. It is my belief that this is the most important level of health care and it is incumbent on the health sector to interact with our people to ensure that we deliver comprehensive services including prevention, promotion, rehabilitation and palliative care. High Commissioner of India Venkatchalaham Mahalingam said with this signing, they have already conveyed a list of companies which can act as project management consultants. One of the listed companies is Prime Project Management Limited. One of them will be, of course, one of them will be one of the companies which uh, uh, have been given by uh, Exim Bank will be chosen as uh, prime, uh, prime, uh, project management consultant as who will prepare the detailed project report and then the project will take off and ensure that the process of choosing one of the uh, companies as uh, project management consultants will uh, be done soon. Guyana and India inked an agreement in February last for the acquisition of high capacity fixed and mobile drainage and irrigation pumps. This was to reduce flooding in regions 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Opposition Member of Parliament Anil Nanla says the planned commission of inquiry into the recent fire and jail break at the George Young Prison is unnecessary. Nanla believes the call to initiate a second COI into the cause of the recent Camp Street fire is pointless. He says there is not enough reason to use a vast amount of government resources for a second COI. Rather, Nandala suggested that security officials should take up their tools and execute their mandate efficiently. So that the prison service, the fire service, and the Guyana police force should be working together in compiling their investigative report and findings. Further, Nandala explained while taking such an inclusive agency approach would be beneficial to the government, opposition, and civil society. And that multifaceted and multitask approach, I believe, augurs well because you have different people emanating from different backgrounds engaged in the same process. It is not going to cause the taxpayers the dozens and of millions of dollars that the Commission of Inquiry will be costing them. It was in March of 2016 that 17 inmates from the Camp Street prison were burned to death after a fire had mysteriously engulfed a section of the infrastructure. Subsequent to that devastating fire, President David Granger had ordered a commission of inquiry into the circumstances surrounding the fire. That commission of inquiry had cost the government some $13 million. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Krilinius. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates Week in Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, July 24 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I'm Trish Ramla thanking you for watching.